coming this evening. Please refrain from using flash photography and remember to turn your phones to silent. We would like to thank our platinum sponsor, GPRC's Douglas J. Cardinal Performing Arts Center. And a big thank you to all our golden sponsors, Brandon Tractor, Driving Force, Fusion, Su Fusion Supervision Services, Liberty Law, Long and McQuaid, Lewis and Kernick? <laughs> it's Kernick. Kernick LLP, and Rona Building Supplies. Also, the Grand Prairie Music Parents Associ Association, hmm? so Association <laughs> is running a 50-50 raffle tonight. The draw will be, will take place at intermission. Now sit back, sit back, relax, and relax. And enjoy Through the, the show. show.
We should consider the doubtful ones again. There's Ermagard. Reverend Mother, there's no doubt about Ermagard. The religious life is no place for the pious. You mean pretentiously pious, Sister Berta. There's Christina and there's Maria. Well, after last night, there should be no doubt in the Reverend Mother's mind about Maria. I gave her permission to leave the Abbey for the day. I told you, Sister Berta. Bobby. Reverend Mother, I've brought Maria. She's waiting. Sister Sophia, the mistress of the postulants and the mistress of the novices do not see eye to eye about Maria. How do you feel about her? Well, I love her very dearly, but she always seems to be in trouble, doesn't she? That's exactly what I say. She climbs a tree and scrapes her knee, her dress has got to tear. She waltzes on her way to mass and whistles by the stair. And underneath her wimble she has colors in I've even heard her singing in the abbey. She's always late for chapel, but her penitence is real. She's always late for everything except for every meal. I hate to have to say it, but I very firmly feel Marie is not an answer to the abbey. I'd like to say a word on her behalf. 
Maria, it's Sister Margarita. Maria makes me laugh. How do you solve a problem like Maria? How do you catch a cloud of pin How do you find a word that means Maria? A clear and ancient will of the whistle cloud. Many a thing you know you'd like to tell her. Many a thing she ought to understand. Unpredictable is weather. She's as flighty as a feather. She's a darling. She's a demon. She's a lamb. She'll pester any pest. Drive a hornet from its nest. She could throw a whirling dervish out of world. She is gentle. She is wise. She's a riddle. She's a child. She's a hate. to leave. This wasn't about you being late, Maria. I must have awakened half the Abbey before Sister Margareta heard me to open the gate. Maria, very few of us were asleep. We could only think that you'd lost your way and to be lost at night at that mountain. Reverend Mother, I couldn't be lost on that mountain. That's my mountain. I was brought up on it. It was that mountain that brought me to you. Oh? When I was a little girl, I used to come down the mountain, climb a tree, and look over into your garden. I'd see the sisters at work and hear them sing on their way to Vespers. Many a time I went back up that mountain in the dark, singing all the way. That brings up another transgression. I was singing yesterday, and I was singing without your permission. Maria, it's only here in the Abbey that we have a rule about singing. That's the hardest rule of all for me. Sister Margareta is always reminding me, but too late after I've started. And the day that you were singing in the garden at the top of your voice? But mother, it's that kind of song. When I came to the window, you saw me, and you stopped. Yes. That's been on my mind ever since it happened. It's been on my mind, too. I wish you hadn't stopped. I used to sing that song when I was a little girl. I can't quite remember, though. Please. These are a few of my 
my favorite thing. Girls in white dresses with blue satin sashes, snowflakes that stay on my nose and eyelashes, silver white winters that melt into springs. These are a few of my favorite things. When the dog bites, when the bee stings, when I'm feeling sad. I simply remember my favorite things, and then I don't feel so bad. hard to accept? Even then. Maria, the dress you wore when you came to us, is it still in the robing room? Why, no, Mother. I'm sure that's been given to the poor. Sister Margareta says when we enter the Abbey, our worldly clothes. Reverend Mother, why do you ask? Maria, it seems to be the will of God that you leave us. Mother, please, no. Only for a while, Maria. Oh, don't send me away, Mother. Please. This is what I want. This is my life. But are you ready for it? Perhaps if you go out again into the world for a time, you will come back to us knowing what we expect of you and that we do expect of you. I know what you expect, Mother, and I'll do it. I promise. Maria. If it is God's will, where am I to go? There's a family. A family of seven children. You like children. You're very good with them. They need a governess until September. Until September? Captain Von Trapp will be expecting you this afternoon. He's a fine man and a brave one. <laughs> he was given the Maria Theresa Medal for heroism in the Adriatic. A captain in the Navy? Oh, Mother, he'll be very strict. You're not being sent to his battleship. God bless you, Maria. Reverend Mother, have I your permission to sing? Yes, my child. What will this day be like? I wonder. What will my future be? Could be so exciting to be out in the 
memories. If I don't, I just know I'll turn back. I'm a stream of the things I am seeking. I am seeking the courage I lack. The courage to serve them with reliance. Face my mistakes without defiance. Show them I'm worthy and why. Yes, sir. I was calling the housekeeper and she did not answer. Do you know why? Sometimes she doesn't hear, sir. I'm sorry, sir. I was answering the telephone. Good day, sir. We're happy to have you home again. Why did the last governess leave? Who knows? She just said, I've had enough of this, and walked out. Why? Was Louisa playing tricks again? <coughs> Putting toads in her bed? She didn't complain of that, sir. Well, there's another one coming today. This one can't walk out. Oh? She's coming from Nonburg Abbey, with orders to stay until September. I do hope you'll be home for a time, sir. Just until tomorrow. The telephone call, was it for me? No, sir. It was for Franz. Before you arrived, there was a call from Vienna. Uh, Frau Schroeder, I left the number in the pantry. I know the number. I shall be back in about a month with some guests. Yes, sir. Do you know how many, sir? Just two. Her Detweiler? Ah, oh, her Detweiler. <clears throat> and Frau Schrader. Who wanted me on the telephone? It's the post office. They got a telegram for you. It'll be delivered by 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock? It gives me five hours to be nervous. With that scatterbrain boy delivering telegrams. Well, that's one thing people are saying. If the Germans did take over Austria, we'd have efficiency. Don't let the captain hear you say that. I can't bear being whistled for. It's humiliating. He's being the captain of a ship again. He never used to whistle for us when his wife was alive. <laughs> He's being the captain of a ship again. I just can't stand it. In the Imperial Navy, the bosun always whistled for us. 
but I wasn't in the Imperial Navy. Too bad. You could have made a fortune. <laughs> Wait here. Captain Von Trapp, you are Fräulein... Maria. Maria Rayner. Now, Fräulein, ask to me, or... Would you mind stepping over there? Before the children meet you, you will put on another dress. I haven't any other dress. When we enter the Abbey, our worldly clothes are given to the poor. What about this one? The poor didn't want this one. <laughs> this is what you would call a worldly dress. It belonged to our last postulant. I would have made myself a dress, but I wasn't given time. I can make my own clothes. Good. I'll see that you're given some material. Today, if possible. <laughs> now, you will be in charge of my children. There are seven of them. You are to find out how far they have progressed in their studies and carry on from there. Each morning will be spent in the classroom. Each afternoon, they march. You are to see that at all times they conduct themselves with decorum and orderliness. The first rule in this house is discipline. Yes, sir. Now. This is your new governess, Fräulein Maria. As I sound your signal, you will step forward and repeat your name. You, Fräulein, will listen and learn their signals so that you can call them when you want them. Now. Liesel. Friedrich. Luisa. Kurt. Brigida. Marta. Good. Well, Fräulein, let's see how well you listen. Oh, I won't have to whistle for them, Reverend Captain. What I mean is, I'll be with them all the time. Not on all occasions. This is a large house and a large estate. They've been taught to come only when they hear their signals. When I want you, this is what you will hear. Oh, you won't have the trouble, sir. Because I couldn't answer to a whistle. <clears throat> That's nonsense. Everyone in this house answers to a whistle. I'll show you. <coughs> yes, sir. This is my orderly, my butler. The new governess, Fräulein Murray. Yes, sir? This is the executive officer, Frau Schmidt, the housekeeper. Fräulein Maria, please be sure that her room is ready. Yes, sir. Well, Fräulein, I shall now leave you with the children. You are in command. Pardon me, sir. I don't know how to address you. You will call me Captain. Thank you, Captain. I forgot to return this whistle. Captain, I won't be needing it, Captain. Well, now that there's just us, 
Would you please tell me your names again and how old you are? Now, your? I'm Liesel. I'm 16 years old and I don't need a governess. I'm glad you told me. We'll just be friends. I'm Friedrich. I'm 14 years old. I'm a boy. <laughs> boy? Why, you're almost a man. I'm Brigida. You didn't tell me how old you are, Louisa. I'm Brigida. She's Louisa. She's 13 years old and you're smart. I'm nine and I think that dress is the ugliest I've ever saw. Brigida, you mustn't say anything like that. Why not? Don't you think it's ugly? Well, if I did, I wouldn't say so. I'm Kurt and I'm 11. Almost. That's a nice age to be. 11. Almost. I'm Marta, and I'm turning seven on Tuesday, and I would like a pink parasol. Pink is my favorite color, too. And you're Gretel. I'm going to tell you something. I've never been a governess before. You mean... How do I start? You mean you don't know anything about being a governess? No. Well, the first thing you need to do is tell Father to mind his own business. We said don't. I <laughs> like her. <laughs> What's in here? My guitar. What you bring this for? For when we all sing together. We don't sing. Of course you do. Everybody sings. What songs do you know? We don't know any songs. You don't? No. no. Well, now I know where to start. I'm going to teach you how to sing. <coughs> Let's start at the very beginning. A very good place to start When you read, you begin with A, B, C When you sing, you begin with Do, Re, Mi Do, Re, Mi Do, Re, Mi The first three notes just happen to be Do, Re, Mi Do, Re, Mi Do, Re, Mi Fa, So, La, Ti Come, I'll make it easier. Listen. Do a deer, a female deer, ray a drop of golden sun. Me a name I call myself. Fa a long, long way to run. So I need to pull him through. La I know to follow. So tea I drink with jam.
one word for every note. I did. But when you sing anything, you're using three notes on one word. Yes, that's right. Well, sometimes we do that. Now, all together, and... When you know the notes to sing, you can sing most anything. Don't let a Night this early just because your father's home. How do you know my father was home? Oh, I have my way of knowing things. You're wonderful. Oh no, I'm not. Really. But yes, you are. I mean, how did you know two days ago that you would be here at just this time tonight with a telegram from Don? <coughs> Every year on this date, it's a birthday telegram from his sister. You see, you are wonderful. Can I come again tomorrow night? Rolf, you can't be sure you'd have a telegram to deliver here tomorrow night. I could come here by mistake with a telegram for Colonel Schneider. <coughs> he's here from Berlin. He's staying with a gel ladder, but I... No one's supposed to know he's here. Don't you tell your father. Why not? Well, your father's pretty Austrian. We're all Austrian. Some people think we ought to be German. They're pretty mad at those who don't think so. They're getting ready to... Well, let's hope your father doesn't get any trouble. Don't worry about father. He was decorated for bravery. I know. It's not him I worry about. You know, when I worry about it, it's his daughter. Me? Why? How old are you, Lisa? Sixteen. What's wrong with that? You wait, little girl, on an empty stage For fate to turn the light on Your life, little girl, is an empty page that men will want to ride on. To ride on. 
You are 16, going on 17, baby, it's time to think. Better beware, be canny and careful, baby, you're on the brink. You are 16, going on 17, fellows will fall in line. Eager young lads and roues and cats will offer you food and wine. Totally unprepared are you to face a world of men. Timid and shy and scared are you of things beyond your ken. You need someone older and wiser telling you what to do. I am 17, going on 18. I'll take care of you.
The captain is going to Vienna tomorrow. I have this material he ordered for a new dress for you. Oh, how nice of him. Even before it's made, this is the prettiest dress I've ever had. I hope the captain will like it, because I want to ask him for more material. More? Oh, not for me. For the children. For play clothes. The Von Trapp children don't play. The captain doesn't like them to get dirty. But they're children. They have to climb trees, roll on the grass, think of all the rocks and caves. The captain says the best type of exercise is marching. The children will continue to march. I hope you find your room comfortable. Uh, yes, thank you. There'll be new curtains for the window and the alcove. They'll be hung tomorrow. But these curtains are very good. There will be new curtains. <laughs> will the captain be away long? I don't know. Of course he has to return every time he hires a new governess. Sometimes I think the children get rid of their governesses just to see their father. He must want to see them too. Ever since his wife died, they remind him too much of her. You can put that away. You won't be using it. Why not? The captain won't have music here. He won't have music? And he used to love music. There were wonderful evenings here. His wife would sing and he would play the violin or the guitar. But now he's shut that all out of his life. So that's why he's the way he is. But not to have music. That's wrong for him and wrong for the children too. It'll work out. The captain may marry again by the time the summer's over. That would change everything. They'd have a mother again. It's going to rain. You better close your window. <laughs> Dear God, I know now that you have sent me here on a mission. I must help these children to love their new mother and to prepare them to win her love so that she will never want them to leave her. And I pray that this will become a happy family in thy sight. God bless the captain. God bless Liesel, Friedrich, Louisa, Brigitte, Marta, and Mr. Reitel. And, oh yes, I forget the other boy's name. What's his name? Well, God bless what's his name. God bless the Reverend Mother, Sister Margareta, and everyone at Nomberg Abbey. Oh, and now, dear God, about Liesel. Help her to know that I am her friend, and help her to tell me what she's been up to. Are you going to tell on me? Help me to be understanding so that I may guide her in, the, in her footsteps. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. I was out taking a walk, and somebody locked the doors earlier than usual, and I didn't want to wake anybody up. So when I saw your window open, you're not going to tell Father, are you? <laughs> Did you climb that trellis to get up here? Well, that's how we always got into this room to play tricks on the governess. Louisa can climb up with a toad in her hand. Lisa, were you out walking all by yourself? You know, if we wash that dress out tonight, no one would notice it tomorrow. Then all this would just be between you and me. You can put this on. Take your dress in there and put it to soak in the bathtub. Come out here, sit on the edge of my bed, and we'll have a talk. I told you today I don't need a governess, but maybe I do. Oh, it's you, Gretel. Are you afraid? You're not afraid of a thunderstorm, are you? You just stay right here with me. Where are the others? They're asleep, but they're not scared. Wait for me! <laughs> oh no, look. Come all of you up on the bed. Now all we have to do is wait for the boys. We won't see them. Boys are brave. <laughs> <laughs> you boys aren't frightened too, are you? No, we were just making sure you aren't. <laughs> was this your idea, Friedrich? Oh no. It was Kurt's. That's it. Kurt. That's the one I left out. God bless Kurt. Why does it do that? Well, the lightning says something to the thunder. And then the thunder answers it back. I wish it wouldn't answer so loud. <laughs> Maybe if we all sing loud enough, we won't be able to hear the thunder. High on a hill with a lonely goat head lay, he would lay, he would lay, hey boo. Loud was the voice of the lonely goat head lay, he would lay, he would lay. Folks in a town that was 
white rainbow turtle lay, yoodle lay, yoodle lay, ping pong. Lusty and weird from the go turtle throw, turtle lay, yoodle lay, yoodle Detweiler we're having coffee out here? Yes, sir. Herr Detweiler is still on the telephone. And no sign of the children, Mr. <coughs> Not yet, sir. Hmm. Georg, those mountains, they're magnificent. Yes. They're not like any other mountains. They're friendly. Look, that green stretch of woods over there, when the wind moves through it, it's like, it's like a restless sea. And that sweet little village. That's not a village. That's a town. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt its feelings. <laughs> it's fun being with you. You're quite an experience. 
be quite an experience for me as well. Somewhere in you, there's a fascinating man. Occasionally, I catch a glimpse of him. When I do, he's exciting. Exciting? I've never been called exciting before. I'm beginning to understand you better now that I see you here. You're a little bit like those mountains, except that you're always moving. How can you be away from here as often as you are? Perhaps I've been searching for a reason to come back here to stay. Georg, I like it here very much. <clears throat> Max can't still be on the telephone. I know he's desperate for getting singers for the Kultzberg Festival, but... <clears throat> you like it here? Oh, well, we'd have to spend some time in Vienna, of course. I've iron estates to look after. I thought that was a corporation. It is, and I'm president. You, <laughs> president of a corporation. After all, I managed Tagnac's affairs for years before he died. <laughs> I can't see you sitting behind a desk. <laughs> well, of course, I wear a business suit and smoke a big cigar. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, Captain. Her dead father would like his coffee. While he's telephoning, he just finished. Ah, I'm sorry I took so long. Any luck? How would you like this for the Kultzberg Festival? The finest call group in Austria, the greatest mixed quartet in all Europe, and the best soprano in the world? Perhaps that's something I'd love to hear. So would I. <laughs> All I've got up to now is a basso who isn't even profundo. Max, you always come up with something great for festival concert. And why? Because my motto is never start out looking for the people you wind up getting. That's why I've been telephoning Paris, Rome, Stockholm, London. On Garrick's telephone. How else could I afford it? Why am I up here? <laughs> <laughs> well, I hoped it was because you liked me. Of course I liked why shouldn't I like you? You live like a king. You have an excellent wine cellar. Max! <laughs> I like rich people. I like the way they live. I like the way I live when I'm with them. <laughs> Speaking as a government official, I... Uh, Georg, is there a cathedral around here? There's our abbey, Nonburgast. Do they have a choir? A beautiful. Good. In the next few days, I'll have to visit all these little towns around here and listen to saint choirs. choir. Uh, you'll be here for meals, won't you, Max? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was in a village just that size, Watsman, where I discovered the St. Ignatius Boys Choir. In 1930, they won the festival, became very famous, toured all over the world. Oh, yes. Whatever became of them? By the time their voices changed, they were rich enough to live in America. <laughs> Who lives in that dilapidated castle down there? Trumpelstiltskin? Ah! Uh, Baron Elberfeld, the oldest family in the valley. I'd like to meet him. Well, I'd like to meet all your friends. Georg, while I'm here, why don't you throw a dinner for me? Nothing very much, just something lavish. <laughs> I wouldn't know whom to invite. Today it's difficult to tell who's a friend and who's an enemy. It's not a good time to make enemies. Let's make some friends. <clears throat> I can't understand what's happened to the children. You're not worried about them, are you? We should have been here to welcome you. Well, it couldn't have been an intentional slight because they haven't met me yet. Forgive me, I'll try to find them. Elsa, have you made up Georg's mind yet? Is he going to marry you? Oh yes, he hasn't admitted it yet though. There <laughs> seems to be something standing in his way. And you don't know what it is? No. I do. What? It's very simple. It's money. Money? Yes. He's rich and you're rich. In all the famous love affairs, the lovers have to struggle. In garret rooms, away upstairs, the lovers 
starve and snuggle. They're famous for misfortune, which they seem to have no fear of. While lovers who are very rich, you very seldom hear of. Not a sign of them anywhere. No little shack do you share with me. We do not flee from the mortgages. Nary a care in the world have we. How can love survive? You're fond of bonds and you own a lot. Yes. I have a plane and a diesel yacht. Plenty of nothing you haven't got. How can love survive? No rides for us on the top of the bus in the face of the freezing breezes. You reach your goals and your comfy old rolls or in one of your Mercedes. this way. What's going to happen is going to happen. Just be sure it doesn't happen to you. <laughs> Max, it's a good thing you haven't any character. Because if you had, well, I'm convinced I'd hate you. <laughs> you couldn't hate me. I'm too lovable. <laughs> Herr Deadbun, there's a call for you. It's from... I'll, I'll take it. uniforms and report back here. At once! Fräulein, where did they get those abominations? Out of a nightmare? 
No, out of some old curtains. The curtains that used to hang in my bedroom. There's plenty of wear left in them. Just a moment. Do you mean to say that the people of the neighborhood have seen my children wearing old curtains? Oh, yes. <laughs> They've become very popular. Everyone smiles at them. Oh, I don't wonder. They say, there go Captain Von Trapp's children. My children children have always been a credit to my name. Oh, but Captain, they worked. They were just unhappy little marching machines. I don't care to hear from you about my family. Well, you must hear from someone. You're not home long enough. I said I don't know what I know you don't, but you've got to. Take Liesel. Liesel's not a child anymore, Captain. If you keep treating her as one, you're going to have a mutiny on your hands. And Friedrich, he's afraid to be himself. He's shy. He's aloof. He needs you. He needs your confidence. Don't tell me. About my son. Well, Birgitta could tell you about him. She could tell you a lot more if you got to know her. Because she notices things and she always tells the truth. Especially when you don't want to hear it. And Kurt is sensitive. He's easily hurt. And yet you brush him aside the way you do all of them. I haven't finished yet. <laughs> Louisa wants to have a good time. She's got to let her have a good time. Marta, I don't know about yet, but someone has to find out about her. And little Gretel just wants to be loved. Captain, I'll love them. Love all Stop. of them. Stop! Stop it. You will pack your things and return to the Abbey as soon as you can. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said those things. And after you've gone, Singing. Your children. My children sing. I wanted them to sing for Frau Schrader when they met her. Sound of music. 
to congratulate you. Thank you. The captain was really moved. Uh, yes, I think he was pleased. He's asked me to stay on with the children. Oh, you're staying on? Until September. September? Well, then I go back to the Abbey. The Abbey? <laughs> I'm going to become a nun. Oh, how nice. When you return, think of us. I'll pray for you. Much more pleasant on the terrace. Uh, Alberfeld, <laughs> it's very nice to have you and the Baroness here again. Frustrator's is charming, Gary. I hope she isn't ill. Oh, no. Uh, just a headache. Uh, I'm on my way up to get her. We'll find you on the terrace. Thank you, Franz. Well, slow. Father, I don't think these people are having a very good time. Half the people I invited are talking to the other half. Maybe they're having a good time not speaking. <laughs> Oh, sir, Frau Schrader asked me to let you know that she'll be joining you in a few minutes. Thank you. You might see whether she would like this glass of brandy. Yes, sir. Kurt, I haven't danced the landler since I was a little girl. Oh, come, you remember. Show me. Oh, no, I haven't danced on. <laughs> you said the left hand behind the back. Yes, that's right. Well, but first the boy and girl have to meet. That's wrong, Kurt. Let me show you.
anymore. Well, Kurta, that's the way it's done. <laughs> <laughs> Your face is all red. <laughs> I guess I'm not very used to dancing. Well, hello there. Good evening, Fresh Raider. I do hope you feel better, Fresh Raider. Yes, thank you, Kurt. Oh, hello, Uncle Max. We're having a party. Good. Tell your father <coughs> it's sure to be a success. I'm here. Max. <laughs> Elsa, without a doubt, you are the most beautiful corporation president in the entire world. Thank you. Max, you're back. And as usual, just in time for dinner. Georg, did you think you could have a gala without me? Oh dear, now we have an odd man. A little odd, but charming. <laughs> Liesl, run and ask Frau Schmidt to set two more places. Oh, and uh, I want to see Fräulein Maria. Two places? We need another woman. Oh, <laughs> Liesl? Oh no, she's much too young. I'll ask Maria. You're not serious. But of course, she's a nursemaid. I don't think of it that way. I don't mind, but think of your friends. You can't ask them to dine with Maria. <coughs> and why not? Uh, well, so tell them why not. Max, can you change in a hurry? Yes, Max, we can use you tonight. Frostrader, they're talking about you out there. Come on, Georg, I've been dodging these people for an hour. Oh, Brigitte, have you seen your father? Good evening, Fräulein Maria. Oh, Herr Detweiler, it's nice to see you again. Yes, you're going to. <laughs> I knew it all along. She wasn't actually sick, she just wanted to get out of the party. She was faking it. Brigitte, you mustn't say things that you don't know are true. But I do know. I heard her say that she's been dodging these people. That doesn't mean that she didn't have a headache. It's very important that you children like Frau Schrader. I like her all right. Why does it matter? Well... I think she's going to be your new mother. Father would never marry her, but he couldn't. Why couldn't he? Because he's in love with you. Now, Brigitte, that's just- But you must- No, Brigitte. No. Remember when we were all singing on the floor, singing the Edelweiss song, and you laughed at him for forgetting the words, but he didn't forget. He stopped to look at you, and the way his voice- Brigitte, no! And the way he, you looked at him just now. You're in love with him, too. One more dance, Gretel, and then to bed. Ah, Fräulein Maria, you're not going to be having dinner with the children tonight. You're going to be having dinner down here with us. Oh, oh no. yes. It's all been arranged. Have to hurry. You don't have to change. Oh, and Maria, wear that dress you wore the other night when we were all singing. It was lovely. It was soft and nice. Shall I announce dinner, Captain? Oh no, not yet. The children will want to say goodnight. I wanted them to say goodnight the way they did last night. No, Elsa, not here. Please, Georg, it was so sweet. Not in front of strangers. Please, Georg, for me. Elsa. Presto, change Max, you're just in time. Children, now. Elsa. There's a sad sort of clanging from the clock in the hall and the bells in the steeple too. And up in the nursery an absurd little bird is popping out to say cuckoo. Cuckoo, cuckoo, regretfully they tell us, but firmly they compel us to say goodbye. Adieu, adieu, to you and you and you. So long, farewell, I've got a bit of say. I'd like 
week to stay and taste my fresh champagne? No? No. <laughs> Sign, say goodbye, goodbye. Time's let to go. I cannot tell the lie. I flit, I float, I flee, 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 I fly. all over Austria for something like this for the festival, and I find it here. Wait a minute, Max. Elsa, a singing group of seven children in one family. Max, Gilbert <laughs> didn't even want them to sing in front of the guest tonight. I had to persuade him. Ah, then you have influence. You must speak with him. No. Elsa, this is for Austria. It wouldn't do me any harm. <laughs> Sophia, take our new posture into the living room. God bless you, my daughter. Abe. Maria has asked to see you. I know it's taken her a long time. I waited until she wanted to see me. It's strange. She's happy to be here, but... She's unhappy too. Why did they send her back? Do you know? She doesn't speak. She hasn't spoken except in prayer. I shall see her. Maria! This must have been a trying experience for you. It was, Reverend Mother. Has it taught you anything? It's taught me that I never want to leave these walls again. Why did they send you back to us, Maria? They didn't send me back. I left. I left without telling them I was going, without even saying goodbye. Sit down, Maria. Maria, what happened? Why did you do this? I was confused. I felt, I never felt that way before. Then I knew I couldn't stay. Maria, 
The Abbey is not made to use it as, as an escape. What is it you can't face? I can't face him again. Thank you, Sister Margareta. <coughs> Maria, are you in love with Captain Von Trapp? I don't know. I don't know. Tell me about it, my child. Brigitte said that I was. And that he was in love with me. And then there we were, and we were looking at each other. So I could hardly breathe. So then I knew I couldn't stay. But you do like him, Maria. Oh, yes. Did you let him see how you felt? If I did, I didn't know that I did. That's what's been torturing me. I was there on God's errand. Too vast for the captain's love would have been wrong. I don't know, Mother, but I do know this. I am ready at this very moment to take the vows of poverty, obedience, and chastity. Maria, the love of a man and a woman is holy too. The first time we spoke together, you told me about your father and your mother before they died. Do you remember? Were they happy? Oh yes, Mother. They were very happy. Maria, you were born of their happiness, of their love, and my child, you have such a great capacity to love. What you must find out is how God wants you to spend your love. I've pledged my life to God's service. I've pledged my life to God. Maria, if you love this man, it does not mean you love God any less. You must find out. You must go back. Oh, please, Mother, don't send me back. Let me stay here. Maria, these walls were not built to shut out problems. You have to face them. You have to find the life you were meant to live. How do I find it? You have to look for it. 